Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of the directional derivative. So we'll look at it for a function of two variables and thus a unit vector uh, with two entries, but it can be easily generalized to um, n variables and an n vector. So let's see, we've got a function f of x, y, so it's a function of two variables and a unit vector u, and we're going to put a hat over it to say that it's a unit vector, and we'll say it has components a and b. So notice we need a squared plus b squared equals 1. That's what it means to be a unit vector. So the directional derivative of f in the u direction, so that's what we're defining here, is given by the following. So our notation is this d with a subscript of u. So that means derivative in the u direction of f. So we're going to define it as this difference quotient limit first, but then we'll have this nice theorem that allows us to calculate it easily. So this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of f evaluated at x plus a h comma y plus b h minus the function itself over at h. So again, we've got to take that limit. Okay, so now uh, this theorem makes it kind of a lot easier to calculate this directional derivative. So let's assume that f is nice, and what I mean by nice, I mean we, we're allowed to take x derivatives and we're allowed to take y derivatives. Then we have the following, the directional derivative in the u direction, you know where u is just given by this a, b again, is given by a times the partial derivative with respect to x plus b times the partial derivative with respect to y. So not too bad. Okay, so uh, let's see what we can do to prove this. Okay, so our strategy for this proof is to rewrite this limit as a one variable function and then manipulate that using single variable calculus. So let's let g of h equal f of x plus a h and then uh, y plus b h. Good. But now notice that means the directional derivative in the direction of u is given by the following. This is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of, so what we get is gh, because notice that's the first thing here in this quotient, and then minus g of 0 over h. Right? And so why is that? Well, notice g of 0 is just f of x, y. Okay, great. But now notice that uh, this is exactly equal to the derivative of g with respect to h evaluated at 0, just by the definition of the derivative for single variable calculus. Okay, great. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, write... Okay, we'll write uh, g of h equals f of u comma v, and now u is going to be a, uh, and u is going to be x plus a h, and v is going to be y plus b h. Okay, good. But now notice that gives us the following tree of variable dependence. So notice uh, g our function. So that's going to depend on uh, u and v. Good. And then notice that um, u and v both depend on h. Good. So that means um, in order to take the derivative of g, we need to use the chain rule. So here we have g prime of h. So we've got to use the chain rule there. So this is going to give us um, the derivative of g with respect to this u. Okay, so the derivative of uh, g with respect to u, which will be the partial derivative of f with respect to u. Great. And then the derivative of u with respect to h. So this will be du dh. Good. And then down this branch of the tree, we'll get the derivative of g with respect to v, but that's the partial derivative of f with respect to v. So we have f sub v, and then the derivative of v with respect to h also, because we have that in the last branch of our tree. Okay, great. But now what we can do is evaluate this at 0. And notice at 0, u is the same thing as x. So that gives us the partial derivative with respect to x. 
And then the derivative of u with respect to h is just the number a because of what we have right here. Good. And then here we have plus at h equals 0, v is equal to y. So we get the partial derivative with respect to y. And then dv dh is exactly b by what we have right there. So this is times b. Okay, good. And so now let's read this uh, from top to bottom. So we have this directional derivative. We showed that that was equal to g prime evaluated at zero, but then we found that g prime evaluated at zero was this thing right here, um, which proves our theorem. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at another, we're going to look at an example. Okay, so the example we're going to look at is the following. So let's find the directional derivative of f of xy, so that's given by x squared y plus 2xy at the point 2, 1 in the direction of v, which is negative 3, 4. So the thing that we first want to notice is that v is not a unit vector. And so our directional derivative is only defined for a unit vector. So that means we want to find a unit vector in the direction of v. That's the first thing that we have to do. Okay, good. But that's not too hard to do. We did this kind of thing uh, earlier. So we can let u hat be 1 over the magnitude of v times v. Great. That's going to give us a unit vector in the direction of v. Okay, good. So that's going to be 1 over the square root of 9 plus 16 because we have negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. And then we have negative 3 comma 4. But notice that's uh, 1 over root 25, which is 5. So that's going to give us minus 3 fifths, 4 fifths. Okay, so that's our unit vector. Now we can go about doing what we need to do. So we have uh, the directional derivative in the direction of u of f. And then we're going to say this is going to be evaluated at 2, 1. So notice that's going to give us um, minus 3 over 5, the partial derivative with respect to x um, evaluated at 2, 1, and then plus 4 over 5, the partial derivative with respect to y evaluated at 2, 1. Okay, good. But now notice that's going to give us minus 3 fifths we can take the partial derivative with respect to x. Notice that's going to give us 2xy plus 2y. Good. Now we need to evaluate this at 2, 1. Okay. And then plus 4 fifths. And then we have the partial derivative with respect to y. But notice that's going to be x squared plus 2x. We got to evaluate that at 2, 1. Okay, good. So now uh, all we have to do from here is just do some arithmetic. And so after doing some arithmetic here, we see that this is equal to 14 over 5. Okay, good. So I think that's a good place to end this video.